So this is where the fun begins. Let's talk about how to get these guys to rotate as they tumble down the hill. It's actually quite easy and all I need to do is go to the end particle node. Let's go to the attribute editor again and go up to rotation. So these are the new attributes in Maya 2011. All I need to do is turn on compute rotation. Now the way it computes rotation is essentially when the end particle encounters a dynamic force such as a collision then it needs to rotate. If these end particles are not colliding with anything you're not going to see any kind of rotation and if you just want a random rotation for things like leaves blowing in the wind or something like that then what you need to do is go down to the instancer uh, attributes and choose uh, something like uh, you know your a rotation or your aim direction as to something like acceleration or force or something like that. Uh, but these rotation attributes are largely for when uh, the end particle collides with another surface. So while they're flying through the air, they're not necessarily going to be rotating. So let's see if this is actually working. So these guys go down. So I need to go down to the instancer attributes once again. Instancer. Choose rotation type. Sorry, choose rotation. Rotation PP. Now let's see how these guys look. Now we're starting to get some nice tumbling action once they encounter the surface. And if we take a look up here at the rotation attributes, this is essentially how we're going to control the rotation. When I'm getting out of here by default, it's already looking pretty nice. But if I um, decrease this, I'm going to decrease the rotational friction. So as I decrease this, you see that we're getting a little bit less of a rotation here. As I start to increase it, you're going to see that the boulders are more likely to start rotating when they encounter a surface because you can sort of think about this as the what's the friction that uh, that the surface is exerting on the rotation of the objects more friction means more rotation and then of course if things get spastic you can increase the rotational dampening if I put this way up you're going to see that uh, it's going to start to dampen the rotation itself so essentially all you need to do from this point on is mess with these two sliders which you can do while the um, simulation is running and then you can tweak your settings that way. Bring the rotation dampening down, bring this fairly far up. And then we're getting kind of a nice boulder here. Let's bring this down a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to do, of course, is randomize the size of these guys, because right now we have a very uniform size and it looks kind of boring. So what I'm going to do is go to the Particle Shape tab, and under Radius Scale, I'm going to put the Radius Scale endpoint to uh, Randomize ID. And let's take a look. I can bring this down here. Now, of course, we're not going to see how these guys are randomized unless I press the 4 key and select the end particle and hide the instancer. I'm going to radius scale, increase the radius scale randomization. So now we're seeing a nice variety of scales here. And if I increase this, of course, we're going to get larger overall. And this will also increase the input max. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to tie the mass to the uh, the mass of each end particle to its scale, so that uh, you know larger uh, 
radius uh, end particles behave different as if they're heavier than the smaller ones so that'll help a lot in terms of the random uh, in terms of the uh, realism of the effect so mass scale input is at the radius I'm going to put the input max to something like 25 and the mass itself to 10 and then let's uh, Let's play. You should see the boulders are going to come down a little bit faster, I believe. Okay, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, of course, we want to adjust the graph so that the smaller boulders have less mass than the larger boulders. So we'll create a graph that kind of slopes up from left to right. And of course, you can adjust this graph by clicking here. And if you want to really get in there and tweak, you can. But I'm just going to leave it at sort of a simple line at the moment. And you can see the smaller smaller boulders are going to bounce a lot more because they have less mass. So they're going to start to act more like pebbles. And we'll see some bigger boulders that don't bounce quite as high. They look nice and heavy. So then we have a much more realistic effect. And just make sure that when you actually get around to caching the uh, simulation or the end part of the uh, end dynamic simulation, make sure that caching is set to make sure that cacheable attributes is set to all. So that that means that the cache also holds the rotation attributes, custom attributes, and everything behaves as you might expect. And once you've created a cache, you can disable end particle shape so that it's not calculating at the same time that it's playing from the cache. And this scene will be saved to the DVD as end particle boulders underscore end. Thanks very much, and I hope this uh, answers the questions and uh, inspires you to create uh, more interesting effects based on uh, some of these principles.